Uh, hello. Uh, here's a fun problem, and the reason I think it's fun is because the first time I saw it, I uh, had to think for a second what might be going on, and it wasn't immediately obvious to me what to do. And, but if you follow the usual steps, um, the problem can lead you through it. So what we have is some kind of curved incline, which is uh, frictionless, and we have a box on it. And uh, at the end of this incline is a flat surface, which has a specific uh, uh, length, and it does have friction. So there is mu uh, here that is not zero, but we don't know what it is. Uh, we also don't know uh, how tall this uh, incline is. And we're not given the shape of this incline, uh, which is uh, kind of a hint that you may not need to know it. Um, but uh, um, uh, so gravity will obviously push this box downward, and it'll slide along this incline until it reaches this uh, surface with friction. And the question is, uh, well, a number of questions. What is the coefficient of friction? We don't know what it is. Um, uh, how, how fast is it uh, when it when it gets to this point right here um, and but we do know that at this point uh, here which is at uh, 60 meters we know that this is t equals five seconds and we can say that t equals zero seconds here so we're gonna sort of concentrate uh, the problem um, in this region where we know something about it, and v, in, v initial here we don't we don't know. Um, okay, um, now as usual, uh, so here we've drawn the problem, which is what we should always do, um, but we don't really know uh, much else. So the first thing we'll do is um, define our coordinate system, and uh, we will take. Uh, plus y there, and uh, we'll put the origin here, and this will be uh, plus x. And uh, then we'll go from there, and we'll see if we can figure out uh, uh, what we can. Um, at some point, our, our box will be uh, here, and it'll be moving to the right with a velocity v. And we know that it, it, it will be stopped here, v final equals zero, and we we know it had some initial speed from falling down this uh, this incline. Um, so okay, this is what we have, and let's uh, start with what we normally do, which is to draw the free body diagram for this uh, box that's sliding. Uh, we know that the force of gravity is pointing down. Uh, there must be a normal force which is pointing up. And because the velocity is to the right, uh, we know that there should be a force of uh, kinetic friction pointing to the left. All right, so fine, we know that. So uh, again, we, we're not exactly sure where we're going, but we try to do what we can with what we have. And in the y direction, uh, if we look at this free body diagram, we know that the, the normal force... Uh, minus the force due to gravity, uh, which is equal to the mass times the acceleration along x, uh, we know that has to equal zero because there's no motion in the y direction. The box is sliding horizontally, which tells us that the normal force is equal to the force due to gravity, which is equal to mg. That's just the weight of the box. Uh, Again, we don't know what the m is, so we can't write a number for that, but we, we soldier on. And here's uh, x. Let's do the x forces. In the x forces, uh, we have the negative of the force due to friction because this uh, force is pointing in this direction, and the positive x direction was to the right. So that's where this minus sign comes from here. And there are no other x forces in the problem. So that means that that equals to m times the acceleration along x. Yes, some of you may have noticed that I was doing the y forces here. So this should be m a y. So uh, from this, 
then uh, we can know that we well we know in general that the force the kinetic friction is equal to mu times the normal force which is now we know is mu m g and uh, this is minus as I said because it's pointing in the negative direction so from this we know that minus mu mg is equal to m a x uh, and here the the uh, the masses cancel and thus we know that a x is equal to minus mu times g okay fine now again we we don't know what this mu is and we're not going to worry about it too much so far uh, we're just going to calculate uh, what we can okay so uh, well well we know that this is uh, whatever mu is and g is a constant we know that this acceleration along the x-direction is a constant so we can then use our equations for constant acceleration one of which is v final equals v initial plus a times t now uh, let's be clear here what I am calling initial and final we're going to call this uh, part here initial and we're going to call this part here where it stops we're going to call that final and that there was this other part up here where the problem started let's just call that zero for now we'll come back to that later but for clarity what I call initial is what happens right here at this point and what I call final is what happens right here at this point okay so uh, fine so uh, we know at uh, final at the final st step the final velocity is zero because the box had stopped after um, proceeding over this horizontal surface with some friction so that means that this is zero and we don't know the initial velocity but we know what a is and that's minus mu g and t which means that v initial equals um, mu g t all right now we know something else we we even actually know what t is we we're told that it took five seconds for the box to go from this point to from the initial to the final all right so but that's another thing we know and another equation we know from from constant acceleration is that the distance is equal to the initial velocity times the time plus one half times the acceleration times t squared and uh, we happen to know that this distance is 60 meters uh, but let's do a little algebra first since we have some of these things um, uh, sitting around in analytic form we will then say delta x is v initial which is mu g t times t plus one-half times a which is minus mu g times t squared I've just plugged these two equations into this uh, equation here for constant acceleration which means that mu g t squared minus one-half mu g t squared is equal to delta x so that means that delta x is one half mu g t squared there's another equation that we know fine uh, okay so maybe we can uh, put in some numbers here um, delta x we know from up here is equal to 60 meters equals one half times mu which we still don't know times g which we do know that's 9.8 meters per second squared of course times uh, t squared and t was five seconds so that means that this is equal to uh, so we can solve for this let's put it that way and mu then equals uh, bring the two to the other side 120 uh, um, divided by 9.8 and t squared is 25 
So that means that that gives us that mu is equal to 120 divided by 9.8 times 25. And if you do that algebra, you get uh, 0 0.49. All right, so now we've learned something, and in fact, now we're on the we're on the path uh, to getting almost everything else. Because with mu, you see, we now can figure out what the initial velocity is. We do the initial acceleration, and we can solve uh, for a bunch of other things. So let me um, clear out some space here, and. Uh, Okay, and back to the pen, and okay, so uh, fine, so uh, given these numbers, we can then ask, well, what is the acceleration? The acceleration in x is equal to minus 0 0.49 times g, which is equal to minus 4.8 meters per second squared, fine, so we have another uh, result there minus 4.8 meters per second squared. Uh, we may want to know the initial uh, velocity. The initial velocity vi is mu times g times t. Uh, well, that's already mu times g, so it's 4.8 times uh, our five seconds again. And so the initial velocity is uh, 24 meters per second. So now we know the velocity right here. See, everything's starting to fall into place. And um, we can just turn the crank to calculate everything else. But one of the questions we were asked, and things that we don't know, is what is this height? And we know what the uh, initial velocity was at this point. Uh, but we have no idea about the shape of this thing. It's not like we can draw. Um, this as an inclined plane because it's not a plane, it's some kind of curved ramp. They didn't give us any information on the shape of it, which is usually a hint that you don't need to know it. And uh, here we can turn to our old friend, the conservation of energy. And let me clear out uh, some of this, which we don't need anymore. And we will write down what we still need uh, in a second. Okay. So, uh, we, we don't actually know the shape of this ramp, so, uh, but because it's frictionless, we know that there's no non-conservative forces, and we can use the information we have for the kinetic energy at this point, at this initial point, to, uh, uh, and we know that that kinetic energy came entirely from the potential energy here at this zero location. So uh, because there's no friction, we know that the, um, the kinetic energy initially at this zero point plus the potential energy at this zero point is equal to the kinetic energy plus, and now you see why I gave this the, the zero uh, uh, subscript, so you can uh, differentiate it from this point here, which is the initial, the initial point, all right? Now, this box started from rest here, so that means that this thing is zero. And if we define y equals zero in such a way, and the uh, potential energy, of course, is mgh, um, that means that this part, the potential energy when it gets to this point here, um, is also equal to zero. So that means that m g h zero, which is this uh, height here, is equal to one half m v initial squared, and v initial is this velocity right where it enters onto the ramp with friction. Uh, again, the mass cancels, and it's another reason that we didn't need it. It cancels everywhere we've needed it. It, it, it canceled here, and uh, it's canceling also here. And then what we end up with, if we, uh, so we know this, uh, we know that, and we know that, and that canceled. So that means that uh, um, h, the initial height, the 
take the height of the box when it started this whole uh, exercise is equal to uh, v initial squared um, divided by 2g and uh, we we had already solved uh, for v initial was 24 meters per second don't forget to square it divided by 2 times 9.8 meters per second squared um, and so uh, the height the height here that we didn't know is equal to 29.4 meters. So uh, that that's this whole problem. Uh, one of the reasons I like it uh, is this uh, initial feeling where you're looking at the problem and you're saying, my gosh, what's going on? I don't uh, feel like I have all the information that I need. Uh, but if you follow the normal steps, which means to make your free body diagram, to draw a, a good picture of the problem like we did, um, you can just uh, step through it step by step and the problem will uh, hopefully reveal itself to you. Uh, another thing, uh, a common mistake that I see is uh, um, uh, people making uh, sign errors in these uh, kinds of problems and the trick there was to draw your coordinate system and we had plus x going to the right and friction was going to the left and that's why we needed this uh, minus sign there. That's why I always stress to draw the coordinate system. Okay, well, uh, I hope this was helpful. Uh, take care.